believe that something is right, but nobody else does. It's definitely not easy because you know that it's right, but everybody else doesn't. And what makes it harder is it's, it doesn't become very clear what the right path to take is. But I can tell you that doing the right thing, even when it's very hard and when no one else agrees with you, is the makings of an influencer. I want to tell you the story today of somebody who is an influencer. He influenced and dramatically changed the medical field and is labeled by many as the savior of mothers. Not only is it his observations that change the world, but also his actions. But I have to warn you, his story does not have a happy ending. Ignaz Semmelweis was a Hungarian doctor in the middle of the 19th century. He worked at a time when it was very different to today. Hospitals were not very nice places. They were dingy and gross and, and disgusting. And mainly because they had just so many people coming into them. They were overcrowded, stuffy, and pretty gross places. Now, here's a scary fact for you to think about. One in three mothers that came in to give birth to their children in hospital died. That's huge. So Ignaz Semmelweis, a 20 something year old doctor, starting out very fresh into his work, and he starts to notice all of this. It concerns him, he's worried. He's looking around and he's seeing all this death. And of course he wants to do something. Wouldn't you be horrified? I mean, there were mothers dying left, right and center. So what did he do? He started to investigate. But not everybody was happy about this. His superiors told him that he had to stop. And even though his boss strongly objected to him investigating and trying to figure out what's going on, he still went ahead and did it. See, everybody else just thought, well, this is the best we can do. They just thought this is an unchangeable problem. We're not gonna be able to fix this. We're not gonna be able to change this. But Ignaz had to do something. He had to think of a solution to the problem. You know, I've met a lot of people who just settle for what they've got. But unlike them, Ignaz is thinking very differently. He's not thinking, well, this is the best we can do. He's saying, how can we do this better? And yes, this threatened the, the status quo and, and everyone was nervous about his questions and his exploration, but he had to do something. He had to make a difference. And even though it got him in trouble with everybody else, he still did it. You know, there might be times when you're gonna have to do something that everybody else doesn't like. You're gonna to have to stand up for what's right, put yourself in a position that is real awkward. Imagine it, right? These young student doctors, they were dressed up in their aprons and in their scrubs, and they had blood on them from the dissection that they were just doing, and they don't even wash their hands, they go straight into the maternity ward and start delivering babies. Just imagine that for a second. So, Ignaz Semmelweis watched this, and he made a very simple observation. Those doctors coming from the dissection room were bringing with them the disease into the maternity ward. So Ignaz did something that seemed so straightforward today, but for in their day was completely radical. Are you ready for this? He told the doctors to wash their hands. He made a solution of chlorinated lime and he told them to wash their hands to wash off all the disease and infection that they were carrying on there. Crazy, right? Sometimes we see an issue around us, but unlike Ignaz, we don't take that next step forward and actually put them into action because that can actually be pretty risky. We might see an issue and just say, well, that's someone else's problem. Here's the thing. We don't forget the people who did stuff in history. We tend to forget the people that watched and did nothing. Well, guess what happened? Everybody agreed and believed in Ignaz and everybody lived happily ever after. Nope, that's not what happened. Everybody disagreed with him. I mean, there were a few here and there that thought he was doing the right thing, but overall, the people that were above him in the positions of power, they disagreed with him. And they were very critical of his ideas. So even though the mortality rate went from 30% down to 1%, they didn't believe him. They didn't agree with him one bit. They were critical of him, they laughed at him, and they tried to discredit him any chance they got. Well, I did try to warn you that this story doesn't have a happy ending. Because here's the thing, Ignaz's superiors didn't believe him, and a year later, 
he lost his job at the hospital. And as much as he tried, he went from hospital to university, applying to try and get another job in his field, but he was rejected multiple times. Let me tell you one thing I've learned in my life. Not everybody is going to like you. That's it. Don't expect it. Don't try and get everybody on your side because it just won't happen. Now, if you're trying to measure your life by how much people like you, well, you're gonna be pretty deflated right now. But that's not what's really important. See, notice Ignaz wasn't so concerned about what people thought about him. He was more concerned about with this question, what is the right thing to do? He was concerned with the question, how do I make this world better? So in 1865, Ignaz was admitted to a mental hospital after suffering a mental breakdown. Not long before this, during a, an operation on a patient, Ignaz had cut himself on his right arm and as a result, that had become infected while he was in hospital. No one used uh, disinfectant because they hadn't believed him during his lifetime. And so you can't expect them to have used it in a mental hospital either. And so that infection became so bad that it killed him. Ironic, isn't it? The thing that he'd fought his whole life to stop was the thing that actually killed him. But my question to you now was, was he wrong? Was he wrong in what he did? He spent his whole life fighting for what was right, even though everybody else didn't believe him. But today, if you go into a hospital, every doctor who operates and every doctor that delivers babies, they will be washing their hands, disinfecting it of any bacteria. And you know what? Even just before we eat our food and in every opportunity that we have, we're told to wash our hands. Ignaz Semmelweis' legacy is that it has influenced all of society and that is actually a really cool thing. So this is what I wanna leave with you. What you do has a big impact on the world. My question to you is, how are you gonna impact the world? How are you gonna leave it a better place? You can influence others. You don't have to wait until you're older. And who knows, maybe you will do something that's so dramatic and different that it will change the way we see the whole world for the better. So my challenge to you, be an influencer like Ignaz Semmelweis.